Hey guys, today we're going to take a look at a 4K streaming webcam from Opspot with AI tracking capabilities. The camera is called Tiny2 and it is quite tiny. And actually, I'm using the Tiny2 camera right now to record this rather than my usual DSLR, just to give you an idea on how it looks like. Now, I do have my studio lights on, but later in the video, I will use it with just the ambient light and the lights in the room to give you an idea how it looks like for the average person who probably does not have studio lights. As the name suggests, the camera is quite tiny and the build quality is really good. It has a magnetic base which attaches to the support and you can angle it at different angles, but be sure not to tilt it forward too much because it will topple under the weight. The fact that the base is magnetic is actually pretty nice because you can also stick the camera to any magnetic surface. The camera has AI tracking capabilities and a motorized gimbal, of course, that can track you as you move, but you can also manually pan and tilt the camera using the Opspot Center software, which you can install on your computer. The camera comes with a portable carrying case, which is quite nice and sturdy. So let's start by taking a look at how the image quality looks like without my studio lights, so a normal environment with ambient light and some room lights on. And you'll also listen to how the camera sounds like, so how the microphone picks up your voice. Also, I will compare it to the Logitech Brio 4K and the Logitech C922 to give you an idea on how much different or better the image quality is. So let's take a look. So this is what the Tiny2 looks like, but also sounds like. You're listening to me right now through the microphones of the Tiny2. It's a bit of an overcast day, so there's not a lot of sunlight, but the lights in my room are on to kind of simulate a real life situation where uh, you might not have a lot of sunlight in your space, but you have the lights in your room on. Now I'm going to switch to the Brio 4K. So this is the Logitech Brio 4K. This is what it looks like, but also what it sounds like. So we're listening to me right now through the microphones of the Brio 4K. And just for the heck of comparison, this is what the Logitech C922 looks like and sounds like. Now again, this is not a very fair comparison because the C922 is a 1080p sensor, whereas the others are 4K but perhaps it's gonna give you an idea on how much better a 4K sensor is over a 1080p sensor. I'm gonna go back to the Tiny2, and instantly when we compare it to the Brio 4K, you notice it looks better. It looks brighter and it is less pixelated or grainy. Pay special attention to the TV behind me on the Tiny2 and look on the Brio 4K, it's significantly more grainy. Even my shirt over here, uh, it's a bit grainy and there's some noise there, there and there's much less noise on the Tiny2. Of course, the C922 being a 1080p sensor is the worst of the bunch and there's a lot of noise even on my face right now. Now let's do a quick autofocus test to see how well and how fast they can focus on objects. I'm gonna focus on the AirPods Pro case over here and see how fast it focuses back on my face. Let's do that again. That's pretty impressive. Let's go to the Brio 4K. So the Brio for some reason does not want to autofocus at all. I think there's not enough light and this is white and reflective, but uh, doesn't seem, let me cover my face, it doesn't seem like it wants to focus at all. Let's go to the C922. I don't expect this to focus well. There you go. I don't think there's enough ambient light over here. Oh, there you go. Let me try to focus on something bigger and less reflective. So uh, there's my phone. Look how grainy it is, oh my God. And also it's having a hard time focusing. Let me go to the Brio 4K. Let's go to the Tiny2. There you go. Look how much less grainy it is on the Tiny2 versus the Logitech Brio 4K. This is ridiculous.
So this is the Tiny 2 again. <laughs> the Logitech Rio 4K. And now for the moment of truth, let's see the low light performance. And I'm going to start with the bottom of the list with the C922. Uh, the room is fairly dark over here. Uh, it's quite dark, actually. There's a little bit of light being reflected on my face from the monitor on my side over here. And this is what the C922 looks like. It's not a usable image. Look at the amount of noise and pixelation that's happening over here, which is expected. Let's now switch to the Brio 4K and instantly you notice it's way brighter. Obviously it's a larger sensor, so it lets in more light, but the amount of noise in this image make it virtually unusable. And again, understandable, it's quite dark in here. Now for the moment of truth, let's go to the Tiny 2. And this is what the Tiny 2 looks like in low light. To be honest, it, it blew my mind. The amount of noise on the Brio 4K, and then when you look at the Tiny 2, it's by no means a great image, but for how dark it is over here, it's more than usable, and it, it's, it's pretty impressive, to be honest. Again, this is how noisy the Brio 4K is, and this is how the Tiny 2 looks like. Let's see all three together. And obviously the C922 is not a usable image, neither is the 4K in my opinion, but the Tiny 2 is quite usable. Now I wouldn't recommend recording in such low light conditions, but if you are streaming and you have to be in the dark, or if you're on a video call, for example, it's more than usable. The Tiny 2 image is pretty, pretty good actually. Uh, whereas the 4K or the Brio 4K and the C922, again, let me circle back those or not very usable. As I said, the camera does have a software which you can install on your computer. You don't have to install it, but doing so will unlock a lot of the different features. So let me walk you through the main features of that software. So when you install the software, this is the interface and what you get when you open it. And there's a lot of options over here and a lot of things you can change, tweak, or uh, control. Let me start with uh, arguably the most important thing, which is the view and gimbal. And this is the console that would allow you to pan and tilt uh, the camera to get the view that you are looking for. So you can move it left and right to get the view that you're looking for. And you can also activate motion tracking for the camera's AI to track you and move accordingly. Now I'm gonna get up and move around and notice how accurate but also how smooth the tracking is. Now it's activated. So even when I move quite fast and abruptly, and even when I uh, jump around, it's always able to track and it's quite smooth tracking. So that's very impressive. Now, of course, there are a couple of other uh, options over here, headless, if for whatever reason, uh, you don't want the head to be tracked or lower body where it's gonna go down to track your lower body. There's a couple of AI modes as well. So there is desk mode. And what you notice is when you activate desk mode, it kind of mirrors the image or flips it. So it is the right side up and it's not inverted, which is really nice. It also tries to detect the edges of the desk and keep that in frame without it being warped or skewed. But of course, if it doesn't get it right, you can play around with the gimbal over here uh, so that you get the right view. And then when you remove desk mode, it's gonna go back to um, the original position facing you. Let's see whiteboard mode. So now let's see if it's gonna detect the whiteboard behind me. I put the camera slightly at an angle, so the image is a bit skewed. As you can see, this is not a straight line over here. Let's see what happens when we click whiteboard. And it actually detects the whiteboard. It even straightens the image, so it's a perfectly straight and aligned image, which is quite impressive. And there's also hand mode. If for whatever reason you want to track your hand, you can select left or right hand, and it's going to 
track your hand motion if you want to do that for whatever reason. And then you can select different presets. So let's say, for example, I want this view over here. And then you can select another view. So let's do this and let's zoom in, for example. And then this is preset two. And uh, if you want to preset three uh, somewhere up top, you can add that and then when you click the presets, it's going to automatically take you to the presets that you have predefined. You can also play around with the FOV or the field of view. So right now I have it on wide, but you can also click on medium or narrow, and it's going to zoom in uh, a little bit on each of those. And then there is image mode over here. And this is where you can turn on and off autofocus or play around with the exposure, the shutter speed. There's a lot of different settings you can play with, or you can leave it on auto. You can uh, put anti flicker on, you can work with the white balance as well and uh, manually control it or leave it on auto as well as play around with the contrast, saturation, uh, sharpness and hue of the image. There's also beauty mode, which uh, you can use to add some background blur over here. Uh, this is level three, you can take it up all the way to level eight. I did find the uh, video quality kind of lags a bit when it's on level eight, it's also resource intensive. Uh, but on level three, it's a subtle bokeh effect. Uh, and I did not find that it uh, causes any stuttering or lagging in the video. You can also uh, apply a few retouching filters. So uh, for example, look right now, <laughs> it's gonna make me more beautiful, I guess. And you can play around with the tone, the smoothness, etc. over here. Uh, you can, yeah, there is a lot of things that you can play with if uh, this is what you wanna do. Oh, look at my nose <laughs> that has become much smaller. So uh, a lot of different filters, white and teeth. Oh, wow, it does work. <laughs> and uh, there's uh, a few preset ones, of course, uh, nature, fresh, clear, crystal, etc. So uh, there's a lot of different options you can play with uh, if you uh, want to. And under more, and this is where you can um, set up or activate or deactivate the gesture controls and the voice control. And the gesture ones and the voice ones are actually quite interesting. So for example, to activate tracking, wait, let me turn off retouching so I can look normal again. Uh, if you activate or if you wanna activate tracking, all you need to do is hold your hand like this and the camera is gonna blink twice and it's gonna activate. And then uh, to deactivate this, you hold the gesture again, and now it's locked in position. Now there's also a zoom gesture. So if you do this, it's gonna zoom in on you and you can set in the app uh, how much zoom you want it to do. Or you can do a dynamic zoom whereby you can move your hands in and out to zoom. And you can also use voice control to do a lot of these. So for example, uh, if you wanna go to position one, position one, position two, position one, track me. And just like that, it's gonna follow me around and then you can say, unlock me and it's gonna unlock the tracking mode. You can also ask it to sleep by simply saying, sleep tiny. And as you can see, the device is sleeping and then to wake it up, you can simply say, hi tiny. And just like that, it wakes up. So here are my thoughts on the Tiny 2. I think it's a very capable camera. The image quality is great and the low light performance is actually pretty impressive. And the AI features, be it the tracking, which is impressively smooth, fast, and accurate, or the other features like the desk mode and the whiteboard mode are really nice and they work pretty well. 
the hand gestures and the voice commands are also pretty nice to have. And the fact that you can save different presets are pretty cool. Now it does have a ton of other AI features to beautify you. Personally, I don't think I'm gonna ever use those, but if they are something that might be useful for you, then that's also a great plus. Having said that, the camera is not cheap. It retails for $330. I will put links in the description to the product page so you can check those out at the time you're watching this review to check the price. Also, comparing it to the Logitech Brio 4K is not exactly a fair comparison because it's at least $100 more expensive than the Brio. So the fact that the image quality is better is kind of expected. Having said that, and granted, you will make use of the many features this camera provides, be it the PTZ capabilities or the tracking or the other AI features, or even if you intend to use it in low light, if that's the case, then it's actually worth it. And I would gladly pay that extra $100 over the Logitech Brio 4K because you do get a lot of value in that $100 extra. And that is, it does do a lot more than the Brio 4K and it looks much better. But if all you're gonna use it for is just uh, video calls over Zoom or Teams, then this might be an overkill unless uh, money's not an issue for you and uh, you just want the best image quality out there. Now, later on, I will do a review of the Opspot Tail Air camera, which is also an AI powered 4K PTZ camera, but quite different than the Tiny 2. That one has NDI streaming features, for example, and multiple ports uh, like an HDMI port, but also has a built-in battery and a micro SD slot. So you can actually use it anywhere without the need to be tethered or connected to a computer and record your content. You can even plug in a microphone. So it's completely portable and quite the interesting device. So if you're interested in seeing that video, make sure you subscribe to my channel to be notified when I release it. Again, I'll put links in the description to the product page. These are affiliate links. So if you do end up deciding to purchase this, I would appreciate if you'd use these links. I may earn a commission at no extra cost to you. This would greatly help support the channel. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, thoughts, or comments, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. And as always, if you liked the video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel as this encourages me to continue producing content. Until next time, cheers.